Uh, I already totally know the debate. So with my police, recent police gravel, asphalt, rub injuries, I feel I should wear these sunnies. But I tried to get into a debate over the topic of which we'll now briefly discuss. And I was told, quote unquote, um, by a lady named Elizabeth, she said to me, look, Luke, can you, why can't you go, just go and suck a fuck? And I said, in, I said, and how exactly do you propose one sucks a fuck, Miss Elizabeth? Hello and welcome to this recording here in late March 2021. I'll first refer us, our attention to some um, Huxleyan um, a priori, rather hypothetical perceptual doorways, starting with what I call the family the family biphobe paradox, and it relates to the Mental Health Act's postulate that um, there is an interplay, a contingency of interplay between genetics and, um, and mental illness. Now, um, you may take, to, be, to begin with, and, and I am convinced well, I'm convinced there's plenty of room for corruption at either end of the spectrum of biblical theology, um, be it Genesis creation or the redemption of inbred Genesis creation through the Suez uh, ransom, bribery for ransom, um, false accusation, suicide, murder, and then later, uh, um, after well, well after the fact, claims adapted from pagan Rome for a, a physical resurrection, which is uh, involves the resuscitation, defined to re, to, as to involve the resuscitation of a dead cor corpse uh, back to, to being reanimated and, you know, all organs operative, operable again. Um, uh, operable? Operative. Uh, uh, working. Um... Now, you can, taking either, either story as a sacred um, indemnifying of the, uh, the truth and the word of, of the claims of any, any profession, um, though I personally wish they keep it amongst the, the people that put air in um, automatic car tires, um, or the people that sell you water bombs, or the people that sell you uh, um, Gravox, like Gravox tin gravy, um, or powdered gravy. We, we instead find that it's uh, prevalent amongst the Australian Federal Police, not an arm of the federal government, but a privately owned, uh, federal in the sense of Federal Express, um, in that they will handle your mail, which is, means if you're an anatomic male, they'll touch a cock and ass and balls. Um, my post office is much more polite. They handle mail with an M-A-I-L. Um, and by that, that refers to documentation, letters, uh, postcards, bills, and the like. Now, um, um, it also means this book here, uh, Will You Swear an Oath? These are police-induced facial wounds, by the way, um, if you look into the records, I was taken... So while on the way to the watch house, it's to be explained why there was a detour made to, um, to the emergency department of Calvary Hospital when I don't drive. Um, I'd like that for litigation purposes and 
for attorneys and future hearings. Um, I would like for that, as I intend to relay a copy of this presentation to my attorney and to um, the magistrate and to the municipal court. Now, just a moment. Okay, and on the first day, God hath said, and you sing songs back to him in church. There's one reason how and why. Um, in principle, you'll be thrown a lot by impersonated callers. Let me just delve into briefly what... Now, what they do use is voice clone software. What they can do is have a diversion from all calls incoming between numbers set up as like an auto relay. This means that if you from a given number are to phone any of a given number in your list of numbers, it automatically diverts um, to, uh, well, to an, in, in, an incepted respondent who can use voice, uh, voice clone software. Now, having your calls impersonated uh, by people with digital software has two... Uh, on the one hand, you've got that the person uh, being impersonated, depending on what's been said by their impersonator, um, is completely unaware of what is to be their, to have been their side in a conversational exchange over the phone. You secondly have that whoever's person impersonated them has gathered into uh, perhaps information that may lead to a tactical or identity related uh, advantage. So this could be a whole bunch of private or personal information. Um, they can represent you to your. They can impersonate you in representation of you to. Uh, and I mean false representation uh, of you to your loved ones, uh, to your enemies, start fights. Um, they can call and antagonize until there's a dispatch of uh, mental health um, nurses who arrive and then you're, you're, look, you're going, well, who are you to bother me at this time of night? And they go, oh, sh looks like the patient has no memory of the preceding events required and now look we have we're trying to uh, you know we're, we're at, we could be uh, there are people who need our attention more than you you're not the only person we have to see tonight um, you, you, you we've got to ha we have no time we have no time to engage in this sort of minutia with you okay so we're taking you in and you can take it up with the next delegate in the chain after that um, <clears throat> Safina will massage lotion into your feet and we, um, masturbation will then ensue after that. Uh, a tissue will be used to collect your deposits. Please do not try and deliberately, if you have such a mind as to direct the um, trajectory of your discharge, don't try and um, spooge on our, um, our staff. Now, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, so the impersonators can do a great deal uh, with, with voice clone software. A, a sample, as small though it may have shrank, it may have become less amount of time, is that you'd be sampled in, in a conversational discourse for approximately 30 seconds, and that's enough for a digital synthetic uh, voice clone sample filter to be able to be generated off a monitored call involving you actually talking and then other people people can talk as you sounding as you and even been rep even representing your phone number as the caller ID number um, and yeah God spoke there being no God uh, there been people believing they're acting in the service of gods there have been exclusive religious sects such as Freemasonry in which they believe that they are gods um, who tend to be private sector businessmen who tend to be very secretive and concealed. They're the ones who are going to find more 
inclined to be driven for personal gains to uh, implement the use of such software. Um, with with the religious effect, there's the and and this this um, shipshooms in s some some inter interrelation between the academic the academia of the branch with which their profession is concerned in some respect. Like um, in order for our religion to not make us seem like fools in our own eyes, we have an exercise that we practice and the exercise makes us feel like we're intellectual for being religious at the same time at this time at the same at the same time so you could say for instance how is it that you're into anthropology how is it you're into pharmacy how is it that you're into um, policing people into um, putting people on on mental health contracts and how, how is it that you're into, uh, you know, research, human sociological research, and yet, and you have, you, and you respect the scientific method, yet you wouldn't for a second consider to turn its scrutinous, um, el eliminatory methodology upon the axioms or the fundamental claims of your own religious movement for, um, not even for half a second and see if your religion withstands the critical the, uh, the critical inquiry of a rigorous scientific method methodolo methodologically based inquiry um, yeah so I'm not sure of the best name for that conflict but it's uh, well it's about justification isn't it it's the idea of you know though bronze age and primal uh, yet there's a there's a drive there's a drive to justify it it's not the same as what they um, try and represent as a you know in, in that m mood that opposes the idea of free will and I'm against um, actually I'm against the question do you believe in free will or determinism because one is a completely religious uh, it's represented that they're, they're, an, they're an either or and you've got to contend with one or the other. Willpower is exempt from either option. Um, in the case of determinism, what you'll notice is in common with both sides is that in, in the case of determinism, willpower is ripped right away from the person and the person is like a mechanical object, like a wind-up toy uh, that simply obeys a bunch of um, predispositional behavioral rules acting on the person like an external force such as the wind or um, the fucked up childhood or you know this this that or the other they are external pressures and they essentially force a person to move and make their way by by means of what amounts to there being no other choice um, now the other option, and I don't believe in that, the other option is free will, and that's a gift that it said historically God once bestowed upon mankind. Um, the female, after being created from the first man's rib, and you can test this theory at home, you can see if the boys have a missing rib relative to the complement of, or the count of ribs in a rib cage in a female, um, if there's one less, um, well, you'll find that proves the whole Bible to be true from Genesis to Revelation, really, don't you? Um, it means it means you've done a scientific experiment uh, where you've got scientific proof, that proof being the absence of one rib in the male, rib count. Um, it said free will in the biblical context uh, was a gift that the Creator Lord or the Unseen God um, gave to man and to his uh, wom woman, woman, uh, she was named after, even her, her whole sex is named after, like, um, exclamation man, you know, like, um, uh, whoa, man, whoa, man, um, but, um, <clears throat> her job was to ensure that Adam was never lonely, which meant a lot, a lot of making up for why Adam lost that rib, we'll put it that way. For today's lesson now 
She had free will, but she abused it, and in the most disgusting and depraved way. Um, if you think that those pedophiles who are locked up for all, all, all manner of heinous acts of child interference, wait until you learn that the first woman is said to have actually um, identified a tree and eaten an apple from it. Um, there's arguments about how, how significant would it be if an anthropomorphized reptile or snake were to have talked her into consuming the apple or whether she did it of her own. Again, there it is, free will, ladies and gentlemen. Now, um, once she had done this, uh, a, cur uh, a curse is effectively said to have um, gone and, and blitzed the whole motherfucking earth, yo. And it was gonna stay that way um, for the majority of the Bronze Age. It, br it brings you all the way through the Mosaic Law, the Pen Pentateuch, or whatever the name is given to the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, followed by Joshua, Judges, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, um, the Bible spans roughly a time frame of 4,000 years while foreshadowing an era to come. Um, but halfway through, you get to about, yeah, minus four to zero's common era, which is the assumed date for the birth of Jesus. Now, what it was decided unanimously amongst this committee of going well, this isn't so much about the rights of bitches. I mean, um, St. Paul, who is thought to have been quite the misogynist, he would say things like, um, women must be silent. Oh, he would say that homosexuality was punishment for, for not, from God for not knowing how to worship God correctly. So if you fail to worship God correctly, he might turn you homo. Um, but he, all, Saint Paul, said a whole bunch of other things. For as Christ is the head of the church, so shall man be the head of women in all matters, especially when, uh, in recompense for that removed rib, she gives head ad nauseum. But uh, he also said women must remain. Silent in church, if a woman has a question, she's allowed to reserve and ask of her husband that question at home, for it is disgraceful that a woman should ever speak in the church. Um, so it had absolutely, let me make it clear, nothing to do with women's rights in this. This is proven by the fact that, um, well, there's an obscene bunch of Marys. Like, there's too many Marys for... for for you to fucking, like, uh, it couldn't be overstressed. I mean, there's the Virgin Mary that gives birth to Jesus. Now, if you don't want to believe that um, after being staved into, banged into virginity until the day that they're fucking married, that there was no such thing as a night of conception where Joseph buggered the absolute fuck out of Mary's wife, then I'm sorry, but you just aren't going to have enough faith to make it in any church anywhere. You aren't going to have enough faith to make it to IGA. But um, his mother's name's Mary, the Virgin, and then you'll find that scattered all throughout Jesus' ministry and his course and everywhere he went, there was a Mary here and there. There was a Mary at the fucking... His, his, the love of his life was said to be Mary, the Magdalene, a prostitute... He couldn't take a left or right turn at um, an intersection, a stable, a manger, a temple. He couldn't ride a donkey without, without encountering a fucking Mary somewhere. There was Mary everywhere. In fact, it's this, over, this proliferation of Marys is said to have um, accelerated the debate for the legalization of weed because Mary Jane... Like, we want our Mary Jane. It, it's an eight. It's a question that's never... It's 2,000 years of this question doesn't make fucking sense. Where's our fucking Mary Jane? 
And since the Queen of England isn't about to admit so much as a fault in the scriptures of her sacred gospels, you get your free weed. I only wish they call it mer um, three, four dioxine, Mary amphetamine, and in any case, so it was decided that some money had to be put out for for Jesus, son of Mary and betrothed lover of Mary the prostitute, and the other Mary and the other Mary and the roll the tomb stone away Mary, that he be kidnapped, falsely accused of being the king of the Jews, despite being a member of a common good people, not running an independent monarchy, marched up a hill, suicided and murdered. Uh, and yet basically after, only after this ensemble of shite had taken place, the, uh, and by that I mean these events, um, could they go back and to saying, well, we're, we're inbred in that perfect way again. Like, the way that means, the way that means blowjobs without, like, saying the woman is guilty for a curse on the planet, it's not necessary, or guilty for eating an apple. Just make sure, if you can isolate that guilt and make sure that it's all about how, you know, uh, we're supposed to go out and hunt and gather with one rib less than you and uh, all of a sudden you know and and you're being called the fairer sex you're being called the fairer sex on, on solely on what a um, a rib count by prejudice prejudicial rib count is that why well anyway so you know People wanted it back to how it was when um, women didn't seem unjustly, because women are cluey. If you tell a woman, look, you ate this apple, it's cursed everyone, suck my dick and suck it hard. She's g eventually, maybe the first woman will fall for it, maybe the second, but soon enough they're going to say, hang on, was it an apple or a pomegranate? How can we be certain? How can we be certain the uh, fructose per item ingested isn't bioequivalent to this other fruit source? How are we to know one way or the other? But if you want these infinite blowjobs, um, Hebrew Bible lovers, you're going to have to scale it all the way back to the point where women are owing men again, all because women have got one up on men. And what is that? It's it's the, it's that women aren't doing all the alpha male hunting, the alpha male based tribe hunting. She's taking care of the young. She's guarding the tribe, but no, she's doing so with a full complement of goddamn fucking cock sucking ribs, isn't she? Now, when we look at these four gospels. They were written, I think the three languages, you've got uh, Hebrew, uh, Aramaic, and an extinct form of Greek known as Koine Greek. It's not considered, though it features some similar alphabet letters, I'm talking about in the, in the native alphabet. Um, uh, the Gospels are written, I think, primarily in Koine Greek. If you get an, a concordance, it'll allow you to look up, because much debate, and that's why you've got different versions of Bibles, a lot of debate goes into, well, what English words or se sentence do we best use to translate this chunk of, of, of text from the Koine Greek alphabet? And so what happens is that... Um, you may notice in the English, just as you will notice that if you look deeply into the did Moses cross the Red Sea question, you'll find them admitting, no, okay, they actually crossed the Reed Sea or the Sea of Reeds. What a coincidence that that's in the English, just the, uh, the matter of an additional E uh, in the spelling of Reed compared to the spelling of Red. They've taken R-E-D and made it R-E-E-D. And that's um, 
and, and, and that they were referring to a low tide marsh rather than a giant ocean um, and you lose that whole depiction of oceanic um, or volumes of sea, uh, ocean rising up and forming a um, like a prolapsed inverted wall leaving us leaving a clean pathway for Moses and the Israelites to traverse on foot for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, Reed Sea, not Red Sea. What that demonstrates in principle is that on the basis of how educated, educated people were back then, and they pulled these sort of scams with books like Bell and the Dragon. Ask your grandparents, a few generations back, there was a book called Bell and the Dragon, and that wasn't about King Arthur and Merlin. But it was, the question was, how many people think King Arthur is yeah, the, uh, how, how many people these days from our last census are likely to believe in King Arthur um, and, and that he drew Excalibur from the stone? Or how many think it's a fictitious tale? And so once the generation had arrived and they had um, lifted their heads up out of the Great Depression and... Uh, some of them maybe found a bit of crystal meth because Hitler used to use them with his soldiers and so they worked out, well, fuck, it was used amongst Hitler's soldiers for training and the holding of senses and then so they dabbled and they found they overcame their depression and then the next thing you know they realised, whoa, there's this, there's this Bible story called Bell and the Dragon and it's about a person and they're fucking pet dragon, like what the fuck is this doing in uh, an old Catholic bi uh, Bible? <clears throat> and so they removed Bell and the dragon on the grounds, I guess, that you or I might think it's a bullshit, ficti fictitious story. Now, um, with the Gospels, uh, once again, actually this I'm going to cut because this is too jagged in it, too jagged a clip, and oh, my missing rib hurts. We'll be back just... Yeah, now, so the first written of the four, the datings go, the Gospel of St. Mark, 19, uh, sorry, not 19, uh, 0070, Common Era. So the 70th year, shortly after the fall of the Temple of Jerusalem, which is a known historical event, 70 AD, and written in Koine Greek. Um, then, between 80 and 85 AD, are the authorship of, the, of St. Matthew and St. Luke's Gospels. Uh, and then in 95 AD is the Gospel according to St. John. The Apostle. Now, um, so what, what is interesting, you won't find it in plain English. It's a bit more cryptic than this Reed Sea, Red Sea shit. But um, what they do is, if, and if you, if you go back to the original Koine Greek text, you'll find that verbatim, and by that I mean symbol for symbol, letter for letter, they copied chunks of texts amounting to 90% duplicated out of, Matthew, out of Mark going into Matthew and 70% duplicated out of Mark going into Luke. Now, if you, compare the, if you compare these equivalences in the English, they're going to be different. But if you compare the actual original Koine Greek texts, they're going to be the exact same symbols, which meant you would have had to, at the time... Were you to say these were written at any closer date than one another, you're going to have to suppose that the same people had the exact same opinions and phrased them in the exact same form. Even though Greek was a language, even in ancient times, that had seven different words, all for the where we would use the word love in, in English. They had a different word for the love between a father and a son, a husband and a wife. Um... All, they had all these different words for different kinds of love, agape, um, uh, phagape, which was, it's so, it's so, um, 
it's so it it's so hard to find. I don't think, yeah, that's like the eighth word that I don't think you'll even find. I think it was ban. You would be stoned to death. Um, but but yeah, they copied verbatim these chunks out. So you can't. You obviously would not agree that if if all these people were all bystanders to Jesus' activities and opinions were occurring to them as to how to write for and account for them, they wouldn't, of their own non volition, choose to do so using the same exact same letters, words, and phraseology in in coin Greek. Uh, once you translate them to English, then people have normally gone and variated them. But that you surely must get that as a common sense matter because you've got the King James Bible, you've got the NIV Bible, you've got the you've got how many different versions of the Bible do you have? Well, there how many different people sat at committees and said, no, we think this sentence should say this, and um, but anyway, in in Mark's gospel ends with um, Mark's accus in in Mark the accusation is a circumspect a circumspection by a guard, someone probably with a spear or a sword or a sword and shield, saying, uh, "Are you the King of the Jews?" Now, this was an inappropriate question to approach Jesus with because what it meant was he could, they were enslaved, and so he should have said like. Is, is you the slave of the slaves would have been a more appropriate question. Um, they ran no independent monarchy. They had no duke of the Jews. They had no prince or princess of the Jews. They had no queen of the Jews. Uh, Jesus certainly wasn't the king of the Jews, so it was an invalid charge. And it was most certainly a, an invalid charge for which to proceed to execute someone. So even still, Jesus is polite without confessing. Uh, either way, by saying, well, you said it, not, well, you asked me, and no, I'm not, or, well, you asked me, and yes, I am. So, you've got a wrong question met with a polite answer, and a wrong question comes on behalf of those armed with, uh, you know, fatal weaponry. Okay, now, and so that's the book that has no last words from Jesus as he's put to death. Um and no rising from the dead three days later. In fact, no rising from the dead at all. Only as an interpolation, which means after the fact of the creation of other texts on this matter, did some authors go back and append or amend their versions of the Gospel of Mark. Who knows, maybe their family were at threat of being murdered or something like that. But they appended and amended their versions of the text. It otherwise ends at the beginning of what's called Mark chapter 16 uh, with Jesus' death. And he is um, thrown in a common burial, uh, a common grave. Now, then you go on to Matthew and Luke. And Matthew and Luke have an incline where there are more occurrences of... Yes, uh, there's more teachings... There's more teachings that take on a theme of having anti-political overtones or um, like, you know, fuck the establishment rebel type talk. Uh, and there's also a greater instance of miracles, which is, you know, violate where Jesus performs feats that though they have a, a historical precedence in the religions of pagan Rome going another two millennia back beforehand, Jesus is said to have performed them um, and it's suggested to you as if he was the first one to do so. Even though around the same time of Jesus' birth, the man named Apollonius of Tyana uh, was said to have performed all the same miracles, walking on water, turning water into wine, um, dying on the cross and rising three days later. Apollonius of Tyana could also walk through walls. Um, but uh, Jesus didn't get a copy of that one. Uh, who knows, maybe behind walls too many people were trying to see how, how many times they could bullshit multiply out his story into so many different versions of his story. That will be a, my uh, a mystery for another day. In the Gospel of John, however, you have a, a, a triple roll-up where you've got this thing called the Holy Spirit, 
um, which I call passivity to to any sort of incestuously charged biphobic uh, mishandling, mishap. Um, but you've got that the father and the son are, are, are one, and and um, which means that if Jesus was fulfilling God's plan, and the fa and he and the father are one, they. Um, well, it makes it hard to imagine him in the Vietnam trenches tapping for a communication badge to say, oh, this is the son paging the father. Yes, uh, thank you, son, this is the father. Your alert has been reached by you, who is also me. Do you understand? And by that I mean, do I understand? And by that I mean, do you understand that I understand that you understand? Uh, and you've got verses like John 3.16 and the logistics of um, God sacrificing himself to himself to save us from himself. Now, um, all in all, what you wind up with uh, it doesn't matter so you separated from believing in any of these texts. I'd, I'd observe them for critical study, but um, so long as they're so big in play in society, what they do amount to is people going, well, because we think it is inbred is incest, incest is perfection, which it's not. It will make, uh, you know, cannibalism and incest soon drove... Uh, they're the fastest way for a species to make themselves extinct. Um, these kingdoms built their god Yahweh in the Bible out of, I think, uh, in, interbreeding between two kingdoms, one that, that bore the god, the name of the god Yah, and another that worshipped a god named Wei. And so they might have married or traded some princesses or some princes for an extension of land and then merged kingdoms. And suddenly you have the God known as Yahweh. Um, okay, now I've got my COVID mask. Oh, 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 it's on, it's on, it's all right. By the power of... Whoop, whoop. Whoop, no, it's on. Okay. Um, yeah, so what you have is... There's the mindfuck in... Um, incestuousness is perfection. Um, though adapted into people's romantic lives, I kind of get that if you were to be a misogynist in the 1950s and, you know, women are trying to, you know, some of them are thinking 10 years from now they'll burn their bra if things don't improve, um, but you're getting infinite blowjobs. On um, you know uh, reimbursement grounds because your whole genre had to give up a rib, um, then yeah maybe you might find this incestuous tale one for your bedroom. However, what it it, it makes no sense to say that the very practices uh, bet the you know they were done at the time for bloodline purity, which was a, a political belief amidst kingdoms, um, but they led to predatorial tastes, and once you start to think of the psychosexual sexual mind of an inbreeder, you can imagine them, they've just, they've just gone and fucked their mother, they've fucked their sister, they've fucked their cousin, they've fucked their auntie, and now they're really angry, so they go to a kingdom lookout point and they say, you know, uh, that, that man with a pitcher of water, I want him drowned. I don't like the way he grabbed that water from that water source. Or let's hang this man over here. I feel like doing me some justice. Some injustice. Um, oh, that man's making bread. I'll show him who's in bread and who's not around these parts. Why don't we put him to death in such an... Yeah. And so, anyway, I want you to think now of like when you watch crime stories, even on, even on that um, mainstream media's crime shows where they talk about 
psychosexual topics and how, you know, such and such a person, their background had them uh, born and inbred for the crime of the episode. Um, if your psychos, if you were a member of this inbred kingdom, your psychosexual opposite would be a bilateral brain. That's the an, a non-inbred bilateral brain it's uh, you're not a unilateral uh, you know uh, human origin story decree from a kingdom lookout point who's rooting family members at 12 o'clock and then executing commoners at 12 10 um, your, your immediate psychosexual opposite would be a bilateral brain which is to say a bisexual. Instead of loving the most immediate family member you can find through penetrative intercourse, you're, um, you're targeting someone with the capacity to love everyone without necessarily insisting upon coitus uh, whatsoever. And, and so the bisexual has that ability. Um, so in my opinion, the, the Jesus story is, is the suppression of why you get definitions like um, a bisexual is a person in between. Uh, this is insulting because it represents a bisexual individual to be unsure of themselves at such a deep, deep level that's so important uh, going from day to day, like from, from the heart, like deep down they're so confused. It, it means that the depth, the, the height of confusion is the best that a bisexual can hope for. Or the claim is made that they are, that a bisexual is an, an, an atomic hermaphrodite. Um, and that is not a necessary truth. So, um, You wouldn't have this convergence, and the best proof of it is that aside from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you've got the Gospel of Judas, the Gospel of Thomas, Mary, Magdalene, Peter. You've got the Gospels according to all these motherfuckers, uh, and what, but they're all about Jesus. So they obviously prove something about him, and uh, what I'm suggesting is, and it's why I like the contrast of... Um, the, the film The Two Popes, starring Anthony Hopkins. I like, I like contrasting it with the... Uh, Hopkins plays Rat, Pope Rats, uh, the Cardinal Ratzinger. And, um, and I like to contrast that story and uh, Hannibal, the Hannibal saga. Because it was, said, it was said by Barney, the security officer, that Hannibal... Uh, um, was much more disposed to the eating of the rude. Um, and Barney would recite the term free-ranged rude. So, whereas the communion ceremony, which is representing to you that um, on the basis of a man being bound and gagged, effectively, ab abducted for a monetary betrayal from a friend, so bought out by, from another slave whom he trusted, uh, falsely accused, charged and sentenced to death despite a false accusation, a false charge, uh, is not a man who would want to give up his own life, nor is he a man that was rude. Uh, but those of you into religion cross connotative with psychology have got to ask yourself if you might be weighing slightly on that aforementioned tad of... Um, you know, minus one rib equals blowjob selfish, selfishness by thinking that, well, rather than being suicidal while going up this mountain or hill that we're calling Calvary, um, rather than feeling, rather than empathizing that Jesus felt suicidal at this point, let's instead believe that he was thinking of us. He was, he was, he was thinking of uh, rising from the dead and being better than Superman, and even, even with or without Reeves' legs, he'll be better than Superman. He'll be better than Super Mario. He'll be better than our superannuation. 
um, Jesus was was thinking about us. You know, will Mel Gibson get the scenes right or not? Jesus had these considerations on his mind and not those of the panicked thoughts of a man approaching the last minutes or moments of his life, um, and by that I mean about to die. So, I'm a person who believes in individual selfish to claim retrospect, retrospect to millennia of this man's execution, that he died for any one of us. Uh, you listen to the, the melody of Shine, a song called Shine by the Newsboys. It's got that... Dun, 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 dun. Dun. The song's called Shine, or if you like the remix, Shine 2000. Uh, look it up on YouTube. They're a Christian band called Newsboys. You'll find it sounds oddly, so a lot like um, I Believe in Miracles. Where you're from, you sexy thing. Either they think there's something tremendously sexy about Jesus, um, or they might see something sexy in him being killed, where I would say, well, that's... Now, look, no wonder, no wonder you got teens hooking up at Christian concerts and making out and shit. Like, newsboys might as well be getting tongues waggling. But anyway, no, so, um, I, yeah, I, I, I digress, I digest from taking communion altogether, and I consider it rude, and I think, well, when you weigh up these characters, these Christians who have the audacity to go against evolution, all it's proven, I've even watched, you watch them backfire and go, oh, what, so you think the first man and the first woman just evolved? I'm like, would you cut the shit out, or what? And they evolved, and then immediately the first man ripped his fucking first rib out, um, just out of an evolutionary drive. Who said, do you notice how they just won't let go of the religion? They're trying to mix it together. Who's, who said we didn't evolve in batches of, uh, you know, four, batches of 50 to 100 people um, after a star... After a, after a star collided with a goddamn motherfucking swamp where monkeys were fucking and there were chemical changes you know in the in the womb there are um, there are trimesterial changes and shifts where a, fe a gestating fetus will will bear fur and shed fur um, it's it's a remnant and a tribute to our evolutionary origins has nothing to do with the book of genesis uh, See, you can tell they're religious at the back, in the back of their heads, all the way to going, oh, so you, what, you just think the first man and the first woman just, yeah, I think they, I think they evolved uh, with the first priest, but he didn't count for either man or woman because he, he, he had evolved with an automatic celibacy oath attached to his uh, ribness, they called it back at the time, which is where... Um, in the Bronze Age, at the point where a rem removed rib, a, pri a celibate priest, a cel as, a, as a sign of their celibate, uh, the sanctity of their celibacy being recognized by the priest, they evolved what's called a ribnical attachment, which is where the penile, um, the, the, not, the unused un and un indeed unusable penile orifice, was used to plug into the removed rib, um, causing a rib to a uh, penis to rib connection. Uh, that was supposed supposed to sim be symbolic of how the priest would be there to reconcile all differences, to indemnify all wedding ceremonies, to be celibate, truly celibate, celibate, like um, you know that no priest better knows he's, he isn't going to get any fucking going on when his penis is sticking into his rib cage, is he? But he evolved this way, and, um, peop and the first man and the first woman just evolved as if they were in, the, in Eden and then immediately got married before the first priest. No, doesn't it go to show who's really still quite religious in this bitch deep down? 
If they're asking questions like that, you think the first man and the first woman just evolved? You could have had a swamp of fucking 77 motherfuckers. Uh, none of whom were the immediate sons or daughters of anyone. All, all joining up in, in different... And, and it could have occurred in different places. There could have been flares, solar flares and stars hitting various regions of the world. Different... Uh, at different... Um, temperature conditions and um, you know and then monkeys evolving into more bi bipedal creatures and depending on where they were the, and the climate their, their skin colors adapted in various ways all of these stories are much more scientifically uh, assured than that they make more sense than the Bible uh, but what I'm submitting to you that you get if you're a believer in Genesis and the four Gospels is that you march out in bread and you say, well, it satisfies our thirsts. And in, in a way that's indiscriminatory of whether or not you're eating the root or not. In fact, you, your preference is to, in communion wafer form, eat a body of the nicest guy subjected to the, most, the worst form of mistreatment going around at the time and to eat his body. Um, you know, Hannibal Lecter allowed his... Uh, um, you know, he, he, his victims were allowed to have some idea of what was to become of them. Um, he, would eat the, he would eat his free-range rude. Um, so I, find, I found Ratzinger to be more frightening, even with, just with his communion, than I did Hannibal. Um, but then, but then Hannibal is a fiction. Uh, that you should eat the body of Christ for some sort of, uh, indemnifying, redemptive purpose is a doctrine of the church that persists to this day. But what I submit you get is a biphobic murder plus three books immediately in the canon about how to cover it up which poses the question, who can cover this up the best way? And then who can cover it up better than them? And who can cover it up better? Of course, we've always got a spot for you. And that is your Matthew, Luke, and John effect. You go, well, Matthew and Luke cover this gospel up. Mark's gospel, they cover it up pretty well. Um... You know, uh, Luke's a bit better than Matthew's, and John John covers it up better than Matthew's and Luke's, even Matthew's and Luke's combined. So you've got you've got triple layered cover up. So you can now take and frame frame any bisexual, and this bears out in this odd paradox where uh, you're told, yeah, in order to be mentally ill, it it roots in genetics. So the, the house down the street at number 23 has Down syndrome. Don't be unsympathetic. It, it afflicts the family. It's in their genes. And then you look up bi bisexual community health statistics, and what do you get? You get a list of mental illnesses all said to stem from genetics, interestingly enough. Um, depression, nervous breakdown, suicidal thoughts and feelings, mood swings... All these disorders, mental disorders, that are said to be caused by the genetics. However, you're not having it apl applied to, um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and their families down at house number 23. You have it applied to a community by a discriminatory, demo de a demographic measurement of their sexual disposition. And it's the bisexual disposition. So... Did did um did the whole bisexual community grow out of house number twenty five? Did they grow across the street out of house number ten? Did did the whole bisexual community get raised under one roof with one pair of parents and uh, as one family, or are they cropping up all over the place? Are bisexuals coming from every direction? Because as soon as you admit that truth, which is that they are, we have an immediate problem here. We have that either you're saying 
that the sexual health disposition in itself is to um, is just to be considered sick um, in and of itself intrinsically, even without anyone fucking a bisexual who's celibate and, or who hasn't fucked in years. Um, or you're saying that the that the the regard for the group is more or less on par with that of a, of a, um, a human sacrifice, because this is not viewing the community on an equal footing with um, uh, with a mental disorder that is in the genome of a family that's uh, part of an immediate family tree. It's it's a it's a demographic. Uh, found everywhere through all throughout the country. So you tell me what, if not the Christian religion, is the source for this prejudice? And I, in turn, will offer you a hand job. If you wish to submit your suggestion for a possible answer to this paradox, um, admission is free. You pay at the door, bring your own seats, we'll sit on the floor. Whoa, it's so hard being the moon and shit. Whoa, shit, man.